So what if that rumored Pixel 5 price is an indication that we should not be too excited? As yes, it looks like the Pixel 5 might bring a hot price tag, but now we know what the catch is. It seems that the end of an era has begun as Samsung might have already begun to officially ditch its own displays for a future lineup. And even with how flagship the OnePlus 8 Pro is, it seems special editions might be no more. I'm Jaime Rivera, and how often do do you use or even care about the Google Assistant? Let us know in the comments of Josh's recent video review of the Pixel Buds 2 as there's a very interesting argument to that. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with deals. And listen, if you can't hear the birds, that's awesome. But that's one of the things about recording during the day. But anyways, I know you guys were going crazy because we hadn't been covering Apple deals for a bit. All two of you, we've got some more. Right now, that latest 16-inch MacBook Pro is currently $300 off at B&H, leaving the 2.7 gigahertz Intel Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage for 2,099 bucks. The latest MacBook Air is also $100 off, leaving the 512 gigabyte variant for 1,200 bucks. And for those of you gamers, the Razer Jungle Cat controller is also $15 off, leaving it at 85 bucks shipped. Now we have more deals for other Apple products in addition to BenQ monitors and more in the links of the description. BenQ or Bank, which is the way. Now, as for an update to everything that's happening with COVID-19 and what technology companies are doing to help, we know that Google and Apple have been working on an API for contact tracing. And well, today we get iOS 13.5 and it's a step in that direction. For starters, it brings this new notification exposure API built by both companies with the foundation for contact tracing that should be developed into applications coming soon. Other key features include Face ID now detecting when you're wearing a mask and immediately asking you for your password instead of taking for ever to realize it. Now, the advantage is it also works on Apple Pay and other applications where you use Face ID. So we've got a full list of all the changes in the links in the description. Now let's try to remember which is that smartphone that took the crown for the weirdest name of 2019. That's right, the OnePlus 7T Pro 5G McLaren edition. Yeah, that's the whole name. It seems we won't have another one to mock as OnePlus is no longer listed in the official McLaren partners page. None of the companies have made a statement yet, but it seems that their partnership has come to an end, meaning that we won't see any McLaren branded phones from OnePlus soon. It could be a mistake or part of a strategy, but the logo isn't back on the site yet. We'll keep you posted on any developments or updates, and let's just hope that if they do partner again, which I hope, because I do love everything McLaren oriented, up to the point where I even keep the the original boxes, but let's just hope they come up with a better name next time. Now let's go through the negative part of everything that's going wrong with the pandemic. For example, we get two unpacked events every year, one for the Galaxy S lineup, one for the Galaxy Note. And I'm even shocked that we had that Galaxy S unpacked in February right before everything went crazy. But for those of you wondering what's gonna happen with the next one, well, thing is, for obvious reasons, this year might be different. According to a report from South Korea, Samsung has already taken their decision, and this will be the first time ever that the company is releasing a flagship online. Now, we get tons of silent releases online from Samsung, but they will obviously have some sort of an event for the Galaxy Notes Impact somehow. The event is still slated for August, but we don't have any specific dates yet. Obviously, the products that we're expecting are the latest Galaxy Notes that we've been covering a bit, in addition to a possible successor to the Galaxy Fold, and also wearables, uh, which now we need more than ever. We'll see. And since we're talking Samsung, let's also continue discussing the possible negative implications of some strategy changes. I mean, we've discussed extensively how concerned we are with having Apple use BOE for their most popular iPhone 12, as the rumors hint. And we know that Samsung has been considering cutting cost by using other suppliers for displays instead of their own. But I call this an end of an era because ever since the Galaxy S2, notice, Galaxy S2, Samsung has owned smartphone displays. They have owned the market. They provide the best displays in the industry, and that might just come to an end, sort of. 
According to some industry insiders, after a month of preliminary negotiations, Samsung just sent an official request for a quotation to BOE, which hints to the deal happening and also to the fact that they are also working on this for the S21. Now, it isn't clear if we'll be getting a Galaxy S21 Ultra, but that one wouldn't be using the BOE display because the orders are only for 90 hertz displays. They have also sent a quotation request to Samsung display for 60 hertz and 120 hertz displays, so they aren't leaving them completely. And we do also know that Samsung usually uses their Galaxy A lineup for experimentation before they bring anything to their Galaxy S. So I'm not saying that we're gonna get it for the Galaxy S21. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case. It makes sense for entry level devices to not use Samsung display, but let's hope that we continue getting best in class displays on the Galaxy S. That's just the way it should be. And finally, let's call these the most interesting news today. I mean, it's interesting how pixels have completely taken over the spotlight over the last couple of days. I just wish that those phones sold as much as I noticed the enthusiasm behind all the leaks. I hope that that will be the case this year, but well, it gets interesting. I mean, we've been getting several rumors that the Google Pixel 5 might not be a flagship. And yesterday we covered the fact that a Google survey showed that this phone might even cost $699. Now, XDA developers has found some new evidence in the Android 11 developer preview that hinted the Pixel 5 was bringing a Qualcomm Snapdragon 765G processor. It isn't clear if it's the 765G or the new 768G, but it is compatible to what they found in the new Google Camera APK for upcoming Pixel devices. So yeah, think about it. We've got companies right now like OnePlus with their OnePlus 8 pricing their pretty much flagship killer for $699. It makes sense if OnePlus can do a Snapdragon 865, then why can't Google? But let us know in the comments down below. I mean, how much would you care? If Google was capable of giving you flagship performance with a flagship camera, but not a flagship processor for $699, would you care? Because in my case, here's the thing. I think that Google has done the complete opposite so many ways, like really affordable with the specs and they don't sell, and then really expensive with the specs, and they still don't sell. So I actually wonder what the formula should be. They should probably hire a better designer. That's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. Follow me on my personal handles to see me stay at home and try out new earbuds. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.